In this lesson, we're going to talk about the brush palette, which is located in the top left-hand corner of your interface. As you can see, there are a lot of brushes that are already made for you, and uh, we're probably not going to cover all of them because that would take a fairly large amount of time. So instead, we're just going to cover the basics. Okay, so the first thing to understand is that each one of your brush types has its own Z intensity, focal shift, and draw size. You can further change the stroke type, add an alpha, or if you're using poly paint, a texture, or change the material type. Okay, so how does this all work together? Well, using the default settings, we're going to use the standard brush. Whoops! Oh, okay, so <laughs> default settings and the standard brush. Looks like this. Yeah, not very impressive. However, if we mess with the Z intensity, which is pretty much the power setting, raise it to 100, it now looks like this. So the Z intensity is basically how powerful your brush is. Next, we're going to look at the focal shift. This is your fall off. So if you set this thing to 100, you get little spikes. And the reason for that is that there are actually two circles to your brush. If you notice, you have an interior circle and an exterior. The interior is the size of your actual brush. And the distance between that to the outer circle is your fall off. So if you increase the focal shift size, you're basically killing the brush size itself. And instead you're getting a huge fall off, which means that you're getting a very, very small brush radius. However, if you reverse that and say that there's pretty much no fall off, then your brush looks like this. Okay, so <laughs> that is your focal shift and your Z intensity. We're going to put them back at their defaults and go to the, whoops, there we go, 25 go to the draw size. Now this one's actually pretty self-explanatory. It's just the, the size that your brush draws, which is 67 is the default. You raise it to 100, it gets really, really big. Yeah. Okay, so another thing to know is that you actually don't have to keep going back up here to change these things. If you hold down space bar, you get a cool little pop-up menu for it. So you can change the draw size here, you can change the focal shift, pretty much anything you need to do, including the intensity. Now, something else you probably noticed was the MRGB, RGB, M, Z add, and Z sub. These are basically how your brush affects your model. The material is pretty, or the M is your material, which is this thing down here. The RGB is the color. The MRGB is the color and material. So if you have any one of these three selected, if you're model actually has UVs, then you can use poly paint to paint on a new material via chrome or maybe a jelly bean <laughs> or whatever else. Uh, really good for uh, like the difference between skin and your lips, but uh, <laughs> we'll get into that in, uh, uh, in another tutorial. But uh, anyway, let's move on to Z add and Z sub. Now Z add is the default. That basically means that your brush adds to your mesh. But if you say Z sub, it'll take away from. Kind of like carving into it. Think of like uh, whittling wood to create like a totem or, you know, a little wood sculpture. Okay, so there's actually a hotkey for Z sub, so you don't have to actually select it. If you have Z add on and you're just drawing, if you hold down the alt key, it will turn on Z sub. Let go of alt and it'll start drawing up again. Hold down Alt and it'll start taking away from. You also have the ability to smooth out your geometry by holding down the Shift key. This is your smooth brush. So if anything is getting a little too jagged or just doesn't look very, uh, very fluid with the rest of your sculpt, Shift will smooth it out for you. Next, let's look at your stroke types, which we currently have dots selected. So as you've seen with our last stroke, it looks like a bunch of circles that are just drawn really, really close to each other rather than a straight line. So we also have drag rectangle, freehand, color spray, spray, and drag dot. Though all of these actually have their own settings you can play around with. So if I said spray, I can mess with the placement, the scale, the color, the flow, the, uh, <laughs> even the mouse average. So um, each one of these are kind of cool in how they interact with your sculpt. Like this one can create some blobs. Actually, you know what? I'll show you the blob brush real quick. I think it's a little better illustrated this way. Okay, so blob plus the spray equals warts. <laughs> it's 
It's kind of cool. Now let's look at the blob without the actual spray, and instead we're just going to use the drag dot. Okay, let's go ahead and clear that off there. There we go. The drag dot will use your brush technically once and allow you to move it wherever you want. So as you can see, it looks like we're basically just moving around a single dot, which is what the blob uh, brush is actually made of. However, if we combine the brush type plus a stroke and an alpha, like say this one, you can see what it's actually doing. It's allowing us to drag on extra detail so we can place it wherever we want. And that's just the drag dot. If we go back to the standard brush and change it to the drag rectangle and grab that same exact alpha, you can see how the drag rectangle works. And that it allows you to basically select a region you want the brush to be created on and as you drag, the brush gets bigger. Or in this case, the alpha does. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Now, what about the rest of the brushes inside of ZBrush? Well, in all honesty, you're not going to be using a lot of these. Uh, most people that use ZBrush find maybe a handful of brushes that they really, really like, and they just focus on those. So a good example of this is the Move Brush. You've also got, well, you actually have a couple Move Brushes. You have Move, Move Topological, Move Elastic. Move is pretty much restricted to your brush size where move topological, let's say you have like a mouth or something, or like this crevice. If my brush exceeds, get a little bit closer here, actually back up, there we go, and increase the brush size, okay. So, as you can see, it's moving everything. But if I select move topological and grab this top piece, it tries to understand the actual geometry I'm trying to move rather than moving everything. So if you want to close your character's mouth, you're going to want to use uh, move topological instead of move. Because again, if you use just move, it's going to move the whole thing. And you don't want that. Okay, and uh, then there's also the morph brush, which is used with uh, your morph target, which we'll get into in another, uh, another lesson. You have the insert brushes, which is used with Dynamesh. You have the groom brush, well, whole collection of them actually, which is used for hair and... Uh, you know, uh, basically uh, polyfiber. Um, <laughs> what else? You also have the um, curve standard type brush or the curve brushes which operate off of a curve as you can see here. So there are definitely a lot of brushes you can play around with inside of ZBrush. I recommend getting in here and just experimenting basically. You know, grab a sphere and uh, uh, have at it.